let's begin with counting. Okay. Now, the type of students that I get when I'm trying to teach them counting um, is basically someone that's already learned one, two, three, and they know at least all the way up to 10 or 11 or 12 or so, right? And what we have to appreciate when we're teaching someone counting is counting is just a language, uh, your natural language applied to mathematics, right? So depending on what natural language you're speaking, in English, we go one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to wherever we wanna go, right? In Farsi, it goes yek, do, se, char, panj. It changes, right? In Armenian, it goes make, ergo, yerek, chor, sing, and it just continues on. In French, you can do it. In Spanish, you can do it, right? So there's a, every language has their own words they use for the specific numbers, and that's really dependent on uh, where you are, right? I'm more interested in when teaching someone how to count, I'm more interested in, in terms of someone that's teaching mathematics, uh, to where focusing on where they have little hiccups, right? And this process is extremely personal, okay? There are kids in, when they're learning how to count, when it comes to English, okay because that's the language i teach in right so you have to sort of kick yourself into whatever language natural language that you're uh you're using right now right but in english in general kids have a little bit of a harder time reaching going from 10 to 20 because the number 11 and 12 are not derivatives of the number 10 right so number one to 10 are basically just memorization processes, right? So we can write, oops, so we can write number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, when you're learning how to count or you're teaching someone the counting process, what you have to keep in mind that in the English, English language, each one of these numbers has their own unique name, okay? That is not the case in other languages. In other languages, you count to 10 maybe, and number 11 is, in general, if you do a direct translation, is 10 plus 1, 10 plus 2. Some of the languages, that's exactly what you end up saying, right? But in English, 11 and 12 have their unique name, okay? So some kids have a hard time... Uh, getting 11 and 12 into their vocabulary. After that, we got 13, 14, and all the teens, right? So we have 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Now, in the English language, this is really easy to do, right? Because these are all just derivatives of teen. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19, right? So there's a nice pattern there. And a lot of people are just learning this. In general, they don't have a hard time with it. However, there are times where certain students, certain students that I've had, they have hiccups transitioning maybe from 15 to 16 or transitioning from 17, 17 to 18, okay? So if a student is having a hard time jumping from one number to the next number sequentially, let them go all the way through and then kick him back and test that transition, right? Sometimes you have to make the correction right away. Sometimes you have to help them along, right? Whatever you do, whenever you're trying to teach someone, in general, it comes to mathematics, counting, addition, multiplication, doesn't make a difference. Don't try to trick them in the learning process, right? Don't give them questions in general where you're trying to amplify their mistakes amplify their hiccups right uh, make the hurdle hurdle bigger right what you want to do is eliminate the hurdle that they have sometimes it requires you to let them make the mistake until you get to a certain number and then come back and correct it sometimes it requires you to stop them when they're trying when they make the mistake and get them to repeat that. Sometimes you have to start back up here. So if they're having a hard time going from 15 to 16, right? Don't 
necessarily stop them there sometimes let them go all the way to 19 or 20 in general where i take them to sometimes kick them back to 13 and get them to start counting from 13 all the way up right so practice that the location when they're having a hard hard time counting right from 19 what we end up having is a pattern that emerges when you're doing counting which basically sticks all the way up to infinity if you want to go to right forever and ever and ever and the pattern is basically from 19 you go to 20 right and then you have 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 and then you're back to the next tens right the 30 and 30 starts off the same way right 30 goes 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 and then you're into the 40s okay sometimes this requires a certain amount of time it takes time for a kid to be able to get their counting down right the way i end up teaching this if they're the student is just getting into counting and they've had some hiccups at the beginning stages right i get them to count from one to ten okay it becomes easy to do because we have ten fingers right so in general when i getting them to count what i end up doing is i tell them to hold up your fingers and to actually go through it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten right we do this a few times we do it enough until they can do it without their fingers okay and then we're going to the 11 12 okay get them to familiarize themselves with 11 and 12. Okay. so the next set of counting you're going to do you're going to go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12. so you're introducing them letting them know to introduce another hand into their counting process right once they can do 12 without their fingers you kick them into the teens right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen okay and then we do 20 okay i never teach it all the way to 19 and get them to practice all the way to 19. i get them to 12 teach them the teens all the way to 20. so the next time that we're counting or the next step in the teaching process right i mean it may be during the same session it may be in a follow-up session or two sessions later right depending on how fast the student is progressing right i get them to count to 20 and i do this often right because if they can count to 20 they can count to whatever number they want as soon as they learn the hundreds and the thousands and stuff like this and we'll talk about that okay so i get them to go 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 okay without their fingers once they're comfortable with that i teach them all the way from 20 to 100 okay so what we end up doing is we do 20 and then 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 and then you teach them the number 30. from there and i usually try to do this in one session maximum two sessions okay preferably i try to teach them from 20 all the way to 100 uh, in one session okay when you're practicing a little bit of time all the way counting all the way to 20 and then when they're really familiar with it you lay it on hard right so you go from 20 to 29 and then you teach them 30. okay that's a new word right and then you say hey the process continues 31 32 33 34 35 36 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 
39, and then you go to 40, okay? Once there, you can see the lights shining in most students once you start teaching them this, right? Because they realize as soon as they know this and they already know that, then they know how to count all the way to 100, right? So you keep on doing this until you get to 100. Okay. Now, once they go through 100 once, okay, you've gone through the whole process, I get them to count from 1 to 100 every time I meet them until they're 100% comfortable counting from the number 1 to 100. Okay. Where most of my students that I've encountered have hiccups are, as I stated, in the teens, okay? Because from 1 to 12 is just straight up remembering new words, okay? From 13 to 19 is a pattern, and they have to bring two words together, right? The number they already know plus teen, okay? So students in general have a hard time in the teens, okay? Once they learn the tens, right? 2021 20, where they're connecting again two words together learning a new word 20 and then connecting it up with one right so 21 22 23 and then you teach them another one 31 32 33 and so on and so forth where students end up having hiccups when it comes to the learning how to count are transitioning from 29 to 30 39 to 40 49 to 50. So what I end up doing um, when I'm teaching them how to count, I focus in on where they're having a problem. And in general, that's where the problem is. If the problem lays somewhere else, please focus on that as well. Um, and the way you can focus again is what we talked about earlier, where you can let them either count all the way to a specific number you wanted to, and then go back and correct them. You can correct them right away and just ask them to repeat the hiccup, the problem spot, or get them to start off at a sort of a node, right? So if they're having a hard time with between 24 and 25, you can get them to count 24 to 25 multiple times, right? Or you can kick them back to a node where you've already moved on from the teens and you're hitting it up at the 20, right? At an important point where the, the language changes, right? And then you go, okay, start from 20, you go 21, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And if they have a problem, you say, okay, say that again, 24, 25, or let them count all the way here and do it again, right? When they're counting all the way to 100, the hiccups usually occur from the nines to the tens, right? 29 to 30, 39 to 40, 49 to 50. So I tend to focus on those. So keep your eye out, keep your, uh, listen for the, uh, where the student might be having a problem, right? And once they get to 100, okay, then they know how to count to 200. They know how to count to 300, right? It's just repetition of this, 101, 102, 103, 122, 135, right? So if they know 35, the 100 is just another word, right? So they're tagging on another word, in front of words they already know, right? And most students catch up pretty fast with this. Where they end up having a hiccup is the transition from 199 to 200, 299 to 300, 399 to 400, right? And again, I focus on those things. I don't get students to count from one to 1,000. That's a waste of time. It burns out the student. It's it emphasizes too much repetition, right? Because if they can construct the, the number, the word, you don't have to get them counting all the way up to the word. You can start giving it to them at random, right? So from 100, right, you're really teaching the pattern, right? From 1 to 100, you're teaching them how to count and become uh, familiar with it so they can do it rapidly right from one 100 to 1000 you're teaching the pattern you're teaching them to add on the extra word in the front to make the word whatever it is that they want to say it is right so once they know how to count to 100 what I end up doing is I teach them the hundred counts right and then I go back I start giving random numbers for them to say 
sometimes I introduce the random numbers when they reach 100, right? So when they count from 1 to 100, and it doesn't take, it, it's very rapid, right? Start throwing down some numbers in front of them randomly. See if they can say it. If they can't say it, you know you still need to continue doing the count. You know you're finished teaching them or getting them to count from 1 to 100, right? Every time you meet them, when they can read off 90% of the random numbers that you show them, right? So that's one way you can test to see if a, if a kid, if a student is ready to move on to the next level. And once they reach that state where they can randomly pick off any numbers, I start giving them random numbers in the hundreds, right? 259, right? 345, 899 right so I start dropping down on random numbers if they're having a hard time saying what those numbers are go back and explain to them how the hundred counts go okay now once they know how to count into the hundreds the only thing left for you to do if you want to teach them extremely large numbers is introduce the new names the thousands the tens of thousands right the hundred thousand the millions the the billions right but you're basically going with the three digit uh, markers right so let me show you how that works so once a student knows how to count to a hundred and they're familiar with the hundreds right then what I end up doing is I introduce them the thousands right off the bat and then I show them the pattern which is the same pattern for hundreds as it is for the thousands right so basically if they know how to count to three digits okay I introduce them the thousands which is the fourth digit and I explain to them that counting or mathematics in general and this is something that's extremely important to do is constantly to remind the students that mathematics is extremely visual so for them to use the pen and paper use the symbols that we have in the language of mathematics and whatever natural language we have to make the reading process easier right to let their minds subconsciously appreciate uh, what's happening with with the language of mathematics right so when we get into the thousands almost right away I introduce the comma right and I let them know to do a little separation so they're visually automatically their subconscious realizes that they're in four digits right and once they get into the thousands you can you can guess how this goes you get them to randomly read some thousand numbers so i don't necessarily get them to go thousand and one thousand and two even though i do sometimes but in general usually when a kid when a student has learned where we've reached the level where they're into the thousands then they understand that concept very well right so what i end up doing is i usually just kick it into five digits and six digits right away within within minutes really right so these numbers here these are the thousands okay this is your hundred that's your tens and that those are your single digits right in general I don't really need to explain that right once we reach this level the thousands right if the student's receptive to this right away in the same session I teach them the millions and the billions okay because these are just two new words or three new words they're adding to their vocabulary and in general students that I've dealt with they understand they know the words a million or a thousand or a billion they've heard it through their social networks right they've hold, they they've heard it in school they've heard it in media right so the new word is not necessarily new to them what 
I end up teaching them this. And what they really need to learn is, is how to put it all together to read off numbers, right? So after this, we got obviously the millions, right? And then you have your billions past it. I don't have enough room right now to put it in, but basically it's the same concept. You put three little dashes there, show them that. And what I end up usually doing is just placing random numbers on the sheet that we're working on. Let the pen and paper do the work for you as well. And that's not just for students, that's also for teachers, that's also for people, uh, for parents, right? Or if you're helping a sibling learn mathematics, right? Or helping a friend learn mathematics, right? You teach them the millions, you teach them the billions, and then having this up, you start dropping numbers on the sheet, right? Start putting random numbers on the board. 25, 375, right? Start off with the low numbers that we know, right? And then put that number on. Don't put the commas on, right? Let the student do the work, okay? Let the student realize that they have to put a comma here. And if they're not putting the comma there, they're having a hard time reading it, then tell them to put the comma there. If they're able to read it right off the bat without the help of the comma, without breaking it down, then don't emphasize this yet, okay? Only start emphasizing these breakers when you get to really large numbers, okay? Don't break the, the kid's pattern of thought. If they're having a hard time, introduce this, right? If they're not having a hard time, kick it up to higher numbers. Right? Do that. See if they can read that. 375,679, right? 12,070, right? If they can't read that, tell them to look above and see where the comma is and to break it up, okay? And in general, they know how to do. Okay. Some students I've had, the comma when they're placing it, they make the mistake of going this way. This one's symmetrical, it works, right? But if you give them a number, let's say again, with five digits, right? Let's say we had 75,764, right? And your student's having a hard time saying this, reading it. Tell them to put the comma. What I've noticed is some students start off putting the comma here. They think the three-way the separation can occur from here, which it doesn't, which is something that you're going to have to end up correcting, right? So if they put the comma here, just tell them, no, you're always going to count from this side, right? From your right side going this way, okay? That's one place the hiccups appear as well, okay? But if it, they can't read it, put your commas in, right? Once they know how to read the the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, the hundreds of thousands, kick them into the millions, kick them into the billions, right? And once you take them to this level, do not add the comma when you're asking the question. Get them to do it themselves, okay? So, right? Put that number down. See if they can read it. Okay. Rare, where I've had a student who's able to read this, or even an adult who's able to read this without putting the markers on, right? Let's put the markers on. Oops. Not there. I almost put the marker in the wrong place, right? Watch your students. 
it happens. Now, this becomes easy to read. 76,707,074, right? Now, once they know how to read these numbers, and don't give them extremely hard numbers to read yet, right? What you need to do is start not necessarily trying to trick them, but start giving them numbers where they're similar, where they have to sort of pause and think about it for a second, right? So for example, you can give them these numbers here. Seven hundred and twenty, seven hundred and two, seven hundred and twelve. Right. So you constantly need to push your student to challenge themselves. Right. To put all this information into muscle memory, into their minds, and make it automatic. Okay. So this is the concept. Um, this is how I go about teaching counting, okay? And it's very basic for me. Um, like, it, it doesn't take long. I don't, I don't wanna say if it's basic, but in general, this process doesn't take long uh, working with the new students. If they're, they, they already know the numbers from one to 10, and we're just adding on a little bit of information, right? And sometimes I, again, I get them to use their fingers. Sometimes I get them to use tick marks on, on a piece of paper right maybe group them in fives group them in tens group them in fives is easy you put four tick marks right one two three four and you put a line over it and that gives you a five right sometimes i use that in general i don't have to go down to this state but sometimes you do sometimes you do and again this is extremely personal teaching someone how to teaching someone anyway in general is extremely personal but teaching someone the language of mathematics becomes very intimate in, in 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 general because there's a lot of when students that i've encountered they hit an obstacle um, sometimes it's a little difficult getting past this obstacle especially for mathematics with physics i haven't encountered that too much uh, because physics it just uses the language of mathematics uh, to teach them physical concepts, right? The mathematics applied to the physical world, right? In general, it's with mathematics. I haven't figured out why that is. I don't know if it's because of a society or because of the new language they're trying to learn because I've never tried teaching anyone a different language. So I don't know if this sort of uh, struggle exists when people are trying to learn a natural language. I know for me, it was a little frustrating learning English for the first time, um, but uh, learning mathematics uh, can really throw some people off, right? And that makes it extremely intimate, extremely personal. So you have to have patience when doing this type of thing, especially when you're teaching them counting, because that's their first exposure to mathematics. And what you wanna do is, eliminate the stress for someone when they're trying to learn math so help them along don't give them any trick questions until you get to the end where you're trying to test their ability to recognize the minor differences between the numbers okay and that's the process i use uh, to teach someone how to count uh, i hope you find this useful what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the process I go through to teaching someone how to add. Okay, let me take this guy down and we'll talk about that. Let's take another sip of tea. 